Coach Corey Wayne and this is my video coaching newsletter and the topic of today's newsletter is going to be I'm so confused Ooh. I've got an email here from a viewer whose ex-girlfriend broke up with him and he's trying to reattract her and she's basically telling him that she's so confused and one of the things that he said that he did was he basically after she broke up with him, he started to chase and pursue and in his own words, he acted like a needy little bitch. So I got a quote that I wrote in this topic and so he's done a good job of kind of stopping what he was doing, stopping the pursuing and backing up and starting to let her come to him a little bit more. But he asked me to critique his game and his approach and what he's starting to do differently so he can turn things around and reattract her so she wants to be exclusive with him again. So I'm going to go through this quote and then we're going to go through his email and analyze what he's doing right and wrong. And so the quote says, when a woman starts telling a guy she is or was in a relationship with that she is so confused, it means she has become unsure of her feelings for him and if she wants to continue the relationship. Almost 100% of the time when a woman says she's confused about how she feels about someone, it is due to the man acting needy, clingy, desperate, over-pursuing and basically trying to force himself into her life. He has basically stopped asking masculine and is acting more feminine which ruins the sexual polarity and her attraction for him. The best medicine a man can give a woman who has become confused about how she feels about him is a space and time to miss him. It is essential to love your lovers in such a way that they feel free to come and go at their own pace. If you are strong, confident, humorous, playful, and present, and you've given them the space to choose you and come to you at their own pace, they will usually choose to never leave your side. I see this pattern over and over and over again. And the reason why I go through these emails is because each one is a little bit different. And when you're in these situations yourself, it's easy to sit here and listen to me talk about these kinds of things. But when you're in these situations yourself and you're totally emotionally in to the other person, it's really hard to do the right thing. Especially when they've dumped you and you're trying to re-attract them. So he says, Dear Coach, my girlfriend and I broke up about six months ago. I had been with her for a year. This was a long distance relationship as she lives in Las Vegas and I live in Chicago. This girl is one of my best friend's cousin which is how I met her. Everything was great at first. We fell in love with each other right away. I was always flying there or she was coming here. We never went more than a month without seeing each other. We both knew we wanted to be together but were never really sure how it would happen. Either I would move there or she was moving here. Well, as a man, you need to think about, do you really want to live in that city? Do you really want to live in her city? Because if you love where you're living and you don't want to move, think about it. If she's not interested in moving, then there's really no point in you moving to where she is if that's not what you want to do. And so you got to notice like everybody's in such a rush to give up their lives and everything they want because it's what they think the other person needs to make them happy. But you're never going to be happy in a relationship when you move or you change careers or you change jobs to be a pleaser and make the other person happy. You can't sacrifice your own happiness and expect to be happy in a relationship long term because eventually once the infatuation wears off and the newness wears off, you're going to be faced with the fact that you move somewhere where you don't really want to live. And I've done several of these kinds of emails in the past where the guy has done exactly what this particular guy is thinking about doing. They moved across the country, they get there and their relationship doesn't work out and they're thinking, I don't want to fucking be here. I don't like the area and the only reason I moved here was for her. You got to think about those things. You got to think about because if you're in this kind of situation with a long distance relationship, you got to contemplate what happens if it doesn't work out with this person. What happens if you break up? Do you really want to live in that other city? And if the question is, fuck no, I don't want to live there then you should move there in the first place. And if the other person is not willing to move to where you are, then there really isn't a reason for the two of you to stay together. You got to consider that. And it's obvious this guy is not considered that at all. We would talk about it sometimes, but it was kind of a stressful conversation. As you know, long distance things can be stressful and hard. 
The distance did cause fights between us sometimes, just the stress of wanting to be together. Men who understand women never argue with them. I mean, at the end of the day, the whole purpose of all relationships is you go there to give. You're there to meet each other's needs and help each other grow and become more. And if you're arguing with her, and especially if you're not being authentic, if you're thinking about moving there but deep down you don't really want to do it and then she gets on you about that and then you get pissed off at her and blow up at her or you start arguing with her, it's a bad way to go. We would talk on the phone a lot and we usually would FaceTime each other and even do the cyber sex thing. This helped a lot because we could actually see each other. The last few months of our relationship, we started to argue more and more. She is hard-headed and has a temper, as I do. She is Italian and sometimes Italian women are a handful. Trust me, dude, I fucking know. She would get jealous sometimes over stupid Facebook stuff and some of her fights were really just stupid. Well, again, a man who understands women is not going to argue with them. He's going to communicate in a loving adult manner in the ways that I talk about in my book. And this tells me also that you need to focus on reading my book 10 to 15 times and learning the fundamentals. Because if you want to attract this woman back into your life, arguing with her and creating a bunch of drama every time you get together is not the way to do it. Why? Because every time you're with her, if you're arguing and you're creating a negative situation and a negative vibe, well, guess what? That's what she's going to associate with being with you. And if you want to reattract her, you need to focus on hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. Those are the fundamentals. However, we both loved each other and wanted to be together. We kind of broke up just because of the fighting, which would escalate to saying mean things, etc. I blame myself for some of it, but it was not all my fault. I'm sure, that's a fair statement. But at the end of the day, I'm the one coaching you. I'm not coaching her because you're the one that's reached out for help. So the only person's behavior who I can influence is yours because you're the one that's open to getting the help. If I was talking to your ex-girlfriend, I'd be telling her what to do. So you need to make up for the things that maybe she's not a great communicator. Whatever it happens to be, what her shortcomings are. We basically broke up in the heat of the moment in kind of a fight. I told her that I would end up moving there and that I wanted to be with her and get married, which is what she wanted me to do from the beginning. Well, what about you? What do you want to do? I don't hear, Nowhere in your email have you mentioned what you really want. It sounds like you're just doing this to please her and pacify her. And, that, and if that's the case, that's going to be part of the reason why she's so bitchy and pissed off because deep down, she knows that you're not being honest and truthful. She knows that you don't really want to live there and move there. She used to say all the time, I wish you could move here. I love you so much. She had a trip already planned to come visit me in Chicago after we'd broken up. She still came here, but it was just different. We ended up fighting when she got here, and the last night she was here, she left and went to her aunt's house. She has family here because she was born here. When she went back home, that was pretty much it. I, of course, made a lot of mistakes after the breakup by chasing her, trying to get her back. I was needy and a little bitch and it just pushed her away because you weren't acting like a centered man. Think about it. A confident, charming James Bond. James Bond always has the answer for everything. He always knows what he wants and he goes for it without fear and without apology. And It sounds like you're kind of been vacillating back and forth and arguing with her because the real issue is deep down you're probably doing something or talking about doing something you don't really want to do. And the other thing is after a year, if you really wanted to live there, you would have done it by now, dude. If being with her was so important and you were so into moving to her city, you would have done it. But you haven't. Now, why would that be? Because you don't – deep down, you don't want to move there. That's the reality. And if you're acting weak, that's when – when women sense that you're acting weak, that's a big reason why they become bitchy, especially Italian and Latin women. They will not fucking tolerate you acting like a pussy for a moment. They want your fucking strength and they demand it and they deserve it and they won't put up with any fucking weak ass behavior. She always stayed in contact with me especially when I would stop contacting her. It was just different though. You could feel the difference in the way she was with me. I stopped contacting her totally and she started to contact me after a month of no contact. I would act nice and indifferent on the phone but I would never call or text her. She always contacted me. Finally one day she called me and said, 
Hey, do you want me to stop calling you? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you never call me or contact me at all. I said, yeah, well, that's because you don't want to be together. You don't want to be together, so why would I? Which seemed like a logical answer. She said she wanted to start talking again, so we did. That's a great response, dude. I like what you did. You realize, hey, sh- you don't want to be with me? Fuck it. Why would I want to continue calling somebody who doesn't want to be with me? I'm just going to go about the task of meeting somebody new. But another thing I want to point out is you're no longer with her and you're not considering moving to her city. Isn't that interesting? Why aren't you considering moving to her city? Because you don't want to be there. Think about that, dude. Really think about that long and hard. That is so fucking important. We started talking all the time and pretty much got back together. I agreed to move there and we were talking about getting married. I told her to come out and see me and I flew out to her. And I flew her out here. When she got here, she was just cold and she never brought up anything we had been talking about the past month. This was my fault because I came on too strong talking about marriage. It was just too fast and I scared her, I think. Exactly. If you're trying to reattract somebody, you got to focus on hanging out, having fun and hooking up. You got to get back to having fun because she's got all this negative stuff in her mind that she associates with you and here she comes out trying to see how things are and right away you're smothering her you're trying to force yourself upon her or into your life she kept saying i'm so confused i'm so confused when a woman says that it's because you're trying to force things you're acting needy you're acting desperate that will always blow up in your face when a woman says she's so confused what she's really trying to say another facet of that is i don't feel like i'm free to come and go therefore i'm not sure about this she needs her freedom You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. And obviously at this particular moment in time, she doesn't feel free. That's why she throws that in your face because she's not ready for the commitment. You just need to focus on hanging out, having fun, and hooking up, creating an opportunity for sex to happen. Get back to having fun, being playful, 90% charming James Bond, 10% naughty boy. We had sex and did fun stuff, but I know I was still acting needy and letting her know I cared too much, just not being the man that I am. Exactly. That's why she continued to act the way she did. When she got back home, she would still contact me all the time, calling and texting me every day. We even talked about me going there for Thanksgiving, but it never happened. Finally, I said, look, if this is what you want, then I'm done and I don't want to talk to you anymore. She did not like that, but I just said my piece and then said goodbye. Her son's birthday was last week, so I sent him a birthday card. Dude, you just told her that you're done and now you're still sending birthday cards to her kid? Think about it, dude. You've got to be congruent with your statement. That's the whole root issue here. You're being a pussy and you're not acting like a man consistently. You say one thing and then you do another. She has an eight-year-old son who I adore. And keep in mind, you're with a Latin woman, dude, an Italian woman, and they don't fucking like it when you say one thing and do another. She has an eight-year-old son who I adore and I have a very good relationship with. I love him and he loves me. The day she got it, she called me and I made small talk with her for a few minutes and then asked to speak with her son. She put him on the phone and I said, happy birthday. We talked for a few minutes, then I said goodbye and hung up. I did not wait for her to get on the phone. A few minutes later, she texted me and said, Fuck, I wish we could get back what we had. I said, yes, me too, and there was nothing stopping us. She called me again that night and asked me to come to visit her in early December, which I agreed to do. I've read your book twice and watched a bunch of your videos. My plan is to go there and just try to have fun and be the guy I used to be. Now you're talking. Hang out, have fun, hook up, just see what happens. I'm not going to bring up the relationship, getting back together, or getting married. Yeah, now you're learning the hard way, but at least you're learning. That's good. I know it's hard, but I like this. I like what you're doing. You're, you're, it's like you're turning the ship in the other direction. I don't know if I will even say I love you at any time. See, stay in the present moment, dude. Don't worry about that shit. I just want to try and have fun and that's it. Now you're fucking talking. She has been texting me all week and I try to keep it short, only a few texts, nothing too long or drawn out. You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. You're giving her the choice to choose you.
on her own. She's coming to you at her own pace. Remember, it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. She becomes unsure. She reaches out. You're sweet, but you keep it short. This keeps her thinking about you. And what does that do? It has a positive effect on her attraction level, which is exactly what you want. <clears throat> so you're doing good here. I try to just flirt and be fun in the text, trying to build some attraction back. I'm still not really initiating contact. I let her text me or call me first. Exactly. And it's working great, so why fuck it up? Why on earth would you want to pursue? I'm trying to be the man I once was and the man I know I am. It's a little different when I don't live there, but I'm trying to be spontaneous, so I made some dinner reservations at a restaurant there for us. Good. The man should take care of the plans. Figure it out. Yeah, everybody's got Google Maps on their phone. If you don't have it, download. It's fucking free. When she texted me, I said, oh, yeah, I made dinner reservations for us on Saturday, so wear something sexy. She laughed and tried to get me to tell her where we were going, but I wouldn't, saying it was a surprise. That's fucking perfect. That's mysterious, and she's going to be thinking about that shit all week. Where the fuck could he possibly be taking me? Is he going to propose? What's he going to do? And you're not doing anything. You're going about your life, and she's getting herself all worked up and wound up and all excited and telling all of her girlfriends about it. And they're all trying to figure it out. They're all playing detective. This is perfect, dude. Good job. I'm just wondering what is your advice and how I should play this when I get there. Exactly what you've been talking about. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Nothing more, nothing less. That's it. Focus on staying in the present moment, creating a fun-filled romantic opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. It's as simple as that. But one thing that you have to do is you got to decide do you really see yourself living in her city? Because if you don't, you should not be considering moving there. And at the end of it, you got to tell her, say, you know, I really like it out here, but I really love where I live and I don't want to move. I've, I've thought about that and I've come to some cl- clarity about that. And if we're going to stay together long term, then the only way that's going to work out is if you're willing to move where I live or maybe there's some a third place where you and I both move to and we end up living there. If you guys are going to be together, you got to think about that. you got to live somewhere that makes you happy. If you really love where you live and she loves where she lives and you don't love it there, it doesn't make any sense for you to move there and make yourself miserable or vice versa. If she doesn't really want to be in your city, maybe there's a third option. Maybe there's some place where both of you can move to and make a complete fresh start where you can focus on each other. I want to be my old self, stop being all reserved and too nice like some guy friend. I also don't want to seem needy. Well, if you let her to continue to reach out to you and do most of the calling, texting, and pursuing, that will not be an issue. I used to give her a huge kiss and pick her up in the air when she picks me up from the airport at baggage. It was one of my favorite parts of the trip, to tell you the truth. Should I do that when I first see her? Ask fucking Lulu. This is your girl. This is your queen. This is your goddess. Fucking pick her up, kiss her on the lips. And treat her. You're her fucking man. Fucking go for it, dude. Do what you fucking want. That's the point here. What's your advice? Should I act like I used to without the neediness? Exactly. Hello. I already told her I'm going to rock her roll when I get there and she giggles and goes along with it. See, she's being submissive. That means she's totally in her feminine. She's basically ready to let you come there and have your fucking way with her. If you go there, you have some great plans, take her some places. You, you, know, you don't even live in the city and yet you're figuring out places to take her to dinner. That's fucking awesome. I know we will hook up but I don't want there to be any awkward feelings between us when we're hanging out. I don't want her to feel uncomfortable. Bottom line is I love this girl very much and I do want to marry her. I kind of feel like this is my last shot at getting this right and making her remember that I am a masculine man, the man she fell in love with. I still think she loves me but I acted so needy it pushed her away and that is why she is confused. She's probably thinking I love this guy but why am I not feeling attracted or drawn to him? Dude, you're starting to sound like me. You're fucking starting to get it. That's great. This is what you want. This is the whole reason why you read the book 10 to 15 times and why you watch so many of these video newsletters. So you can get to the point where before I even say something you're like I know exactly what Corey's going to say. Because when you get to that point. And all these different situations and scenarios that I discuss, and every one of them is a little different. No two of them are exactly the same. It pretty much prepares you for anything. What's your advice to play this? Do 
you got it. You everything that you're thinking and doing is fucking perfect. I've got a week to read your book some more and get a plan together. Wish me luck. I know she's going to test me in some way. Well, dude, from what I've read here, in the beginning, it was kind of a train wreck, obviously. But by to- by the middle and the end of your email, it's obvious you've really done a good job of turning things around. And for the rest of you who are watching this, who are trying to get an X back, this is, I mean, this is a great email of what you need to do. Focus on hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. Because if you're just focused on making her smile, making her laugh, having great sex together, nothing else really fucking matters. The only thing that matters is that you're making her feel great when she's with you. And if she's feeling great, she's feeling good, and she's getting her brains fucked out and satisfied sexually, think about it. That's what you need to focus on. Hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. There's a reason I focus on those three things, and I teach guys to focus on those three things. Because without those three things, there is no relationship. There is no courtship. There, the woman will never fall in love, and she'll never want to become exclusive. If you don't get those three hanging out, having fun, and hooking up right consistently, and let her focus on the relationship and the bonding issues, which are all feminine energy anyways, you'll never get to the relationship. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 